Chekhov 27 and welcome to the aquarium. Here you will see such amazing creatures as the mighty manatee. What's up, bitches? I'm a motherfucking manatee. Now watch me do a goddamn loop. Woo! Did you see that shit? Now watch me do it again. Oh my fuck, yes! That turns me on sexually. I bet all of you fucking losers wish you could do this shit. You can all suck my fat manatee cock. Hey, I don't like this manatee's attitude. Yeah. Fuck that manatee! Oh, you wanna fuck with me? I'll cut your goddamn dicks off! I'd like to see you fucking try! Oh, I will do more than try! But first, let's watch a video! Thank you to the Tads, Blackheart Plays, Ruben, Ray Ray, Hoodie Boy, Super Scout 148, Sample Text, and Frank for this suggestion. You know what? No! Fuck you guys! Specifically you, Frank! You said Shark Tale was the best game ever, Frank! You lied to me, Frank! Shark Tale is a movie about a fish named Oscar who desperately wants to become famous by any means necessary. And if people like Michael Vick and a shockingly large amount of YouTubers have taught us anything, it's that the best way to become famous is to abuse animals. Don't know why it hasn't been working for me, but it seems to work for Oscar who gains his fame by beating the ever-loving fuck out of sharks. Now I want to make it very clear that while I may joke about this stuff, I absolutely do not condone the action of playing the Shark Tale video game. Which is, of course, based off of a DreamWorks movie, because there is no God. After all, what kind of god would subject me to play such abject mediocrity? I mean, look, kids with leukemia, I get that. But Shark Tale? What did I do to deserve this? I am a good fucking person! The game opens up with a section in which you are being chased by a shark and have to move to whatever part of the screen the arrows tell you to. And if that sounds boring to you, that's because it is. Oscar then wakes up because it turns out that shark chase was just a very boring dream. Then his landlady comes in and evicts him because Oscar is broke as fuck and couldn't pay rent. And that's about where the story stops making sense. The rest of the story is told in this interview format, as though the events of this game have already happened and the characters are just giving their testimony on it. Now, I don't have any problems with this format, but I don't know what the fuck is going on. I guess you had to see the movie, which I didn't. I was seven years old when it came out. And like most children in the early 2000s, I was too busy trying to suck my own dick while watching episodes of SpongeBob and painting demonic symbols on the walls with my own cum. I would say I had a normal childhood. Yo, I think this manatee's lost his fucking mind. Who said that? Who the fuck said that? I swear to God, I will turn your cock into a clitoris! After getting kicked out of the apartment, you get to see the next gameplay format. That's right, this game has a total of five gameplay formats. Because this game was developed by a gaggle of guilty gay geese. Guilty of what, you ask? Ever heard of the Armenian Genocide? So the second format involves exploration. You take control of Oscar and go around town doing various things. That may be waking paparazzi to have them take your photo, or just getting from point A to point B. While playing these sections, you either have enemies that you can kill by dashing into them, enemies that you have to avoid, or enemies that you must hide from. Oh yes, that's right, this game has stealth in it, because it is a licensed game from the early 2000s. And it should be no shock to you that the stealth in this game is about as fun as cuddling with a koala. Oh yes, so soft, so cute, until BAM! Chlamydia. 
This game gave me chlamydia, just like that slut koala. The enemy AI is only slightly smarter than Jake Paul, meaning that they are at least able to not fill their pants with mountains of fecal matter while you glide right past them without being noticed. This is because fish and Jake Paul are very similar, in that neither of them are capable of object permanence. That being said, these sections actually control pretty well. Dare I say it, it's actually somewhat enjoyable to control Oscar. The levels are also not too poorly designed, and the graphics are not that bad. There's enough for me here to say that there was at least some effort put into these sections, and I believe that most children would be able to find at least a small amount of fun in these sections, so long as they lack a frontal cortex. Too bad the next section sucks big fat fishy balls. Tell me something. Do you enjoy invading Manchuria and brutalizing the people of Nanking? You know what? Let me rephrase that. Do you like Dance Dance Revolution? Well, imagine that, but it's Shark Tail. I guess raping Nan King doesn't sound like that great of an idea, now does it? This format is so fucking mind-numbing. It works pretty much like DDR, except you use the D-pad, but sometimes you have to hit two arrows at once. This is done by pressing a direction on the D-pad as well as a face button. And yes, that sounds fine on a PS2 or Xbox gamepad, but I played this on a fucking GameCube! which has a D-pad that was made for sexy little lemurs. And I can't tell which fucking face button I need to push. Fuck, fuck. To be honest though, these sections are not difficult. They're just boring and are obviously filler. At least the music is all right, but that's just because the game licensed a bunch of good music like a Three Little Birds remix. The next format is by far my least favorite. It involves you driving through the ocean. You're either racing someone, trying to collect newspapers, or running away from something. These are the only scenarios for this format. And big shocker, they all fucking suck. The controls are just so fucking sloppy. Turning is barely responsive, and the levels themselves are really thin, so there isn't actually a lot of space to maneuver in. I would make a joke about it, but that would require me to put more effort into these sections than they are actually worth. So, moving on to the main attraction. That's right, I'm talking about animal abuse. The only reason I bought this game. These sections play like Punch-Out, but with motion sickness. The goal here is simple. Beat these fucking creatures within an inch of their insufferable lives and try to conceal the massive erection you have while you do it. The controls are very similar to Punch-Out. You can dodge left and right as well as use the face buttons for various attacks. You can also build up a combo meter to unleash on your opponent, as well as push the thumbstick forward in order to hit harder. Now, before you start to think that this all sounds fun, let me assure you that it is not. At best, it's okay. These enemies have so much health, making it take so much fucking longer than necessary to beat them. Also, there isn't any variety. You only get to fight an eel and a couple of sharks. Now that is some grade A bullshit. I mean, look at Punch-Out. You get to fight so many different things, like the French and a goddamn hippopotamus. Did you know that hippos kill around 500 people a year? Look into this little bastard's eyes and tell me that it is not about to stab someone, twist the knife, and fuck the hole. That is why all hippos deserve to get their fucking teeth kicked in. Especially this one. God, you think you're so fucking cute, don't you? Well, we'll see how cute you are when you've got chlamydia, motherfucker! <laughs> British hippo noises! Oh, shut the fuck up, Harry. You tried to kill me with a katana last month. Yeah, British hippo noises. Don't you fucking mock me. And that pretty much does it for the gameplay. Aside from the fame and money system, 
You can collect money by circling certain objects. Then you can spend that money in a store for extras, while your fame meter increases based on how well you do in the levels. Neither of these systems influence the game enough to say much more about them. As for the story, it was just way too unfocused to follow properly. You honestly don't even need to watch the cutscenes. They add absolutely nothing to the game. And while the exploration sections are really not that bad, they do nothing to save the game from its main issue. The complete and utter lack of fish fucking. This is why I should make children's video games. Because I know what kids like. Graphic, hardcore, fish, sex. And Shark Tale does not even attempt to deliver that. Yet, they tease me with these sexy Irish dolphins. And I do not want any fucking judgment from the goddamn peanut gallery. A hole is a hole, god damn it. And it is because of this severe lack in fish fornication that I am compelled to give this game a two out of five. Yo, I think this manatee fucked a dolphin. You got something to say, two legs? Uh, no? Because I will cut your goddamn dick off! Ah! Oh, fuck! God damn it! Who put that fucking glass there? Ah! Oh, fuck! Uh, do, do you need help? No, I do not need your goddamn help! Oh, my fucking god! But, but... If you do happen to come across an ice pack or some ibuprofen, you should probably throw it into my tank.